Hey guys, welcome to Skill Link. It's common everywhere to notice the reinforced concrete used for constructions. But have you ever thought of the need of using it? Well, concrete is a material that has very good compressive strength, but it fails when a tensile load is applied on it. On the other hand, steel rods have good tensile strength. Now, when you combine these two materials, it gives us reinforced concrete with improved tensile and compressive strength. Likewise, a large number of products have been developed by combining different materials for obtaining enhanced performance. Such materials are called composites, and that is what we're going to discuss today. In this video, we'll be discussing what composite materials are, why do we need it, and its classification with some examples. Composites are multi-phase materials composed of two or more materials that are chemically distinct and can be distinguished by their interface. The property of the composite materials depend on the property of the constituent elements. In the present context, composite materials refer to artificially made materials, but some natural composites also exist. Wood is one such good example for natural composites. Wood is made of a number of strong cellulose fibers bound together by a stiffer material called lignin. But why exactly do we need these composite materials? Well, not all the desired properties can be achieved by mere metal alloys, ceramics and polymers. So we do need some materials with unusual combinations of property and that is where composite materials come into play. Today, composites are extensively used in aerospace, underwater, and transportation applications. Most of the composites are made of two different phases. The continuous phase present throughout is called the matrix phase. This surrounds and binds the second phase material called the dispersion phase. The properties of the composites vary according to the percentage, size, shape, distribution and orientation of the dispersed phase in the matrix phase. When it comes to classification, composites are of three different types. They are particle reinforced composites, fiber reinforced composites and structural composites. Let's discuss all these types one by one. Particle reinforced composite is a type of composite that uses tiny particles as its dispersed phase. These particles are characterized by their equal dimensions in all directions. These particle reinforced composites are further classified into two types based on the reinforcement mechanism. They are large particle composites and dispersion strengthened composites. In large particle composites, the interaction between the phases should be treated at a continuum level. If you don't know what continuum is, check out the link in the description below. Here, the filler material replaces some volume of the material and modifies its property. The change in property depends on the volume of the filler material. Concrete is a very good example of this type. Here, cement acts as the matrix and sand and gravel acts as the particles. Another example of this type is ceramics which are the composites made of ceramics and metals. When it comes to dispersion strengthened composites, the phase interaction takes place at the atomic or molecular level. Here, a certain volume of fine material is added to a hard or strong material like metals and metal alloys. The dispersed phase can either be metal or non-metal. An example for this type of composites is thoria dispersed nickel. It's a type of nickel alloy that has 3% of thoria in it. The next type of composites is the fiber reinforced composites. Fibers are characterized by their length to diameter ratio. They possess high strength and stiffness. And the elastic modulus of fibers will also be greater than that of the matrix. Fiber reinforced composites can also be further classified into two types based on the orientation of the fibers. They are continuously arranged fiber reinforced composites and discontinuously arranged fiber reinforced composites. Of these two, continuously arranged types will have an orderly alignment of fibers. In the second type, the fibers may either be perfectly aligned or randomly arranged. 
Let's move on to the last type of composites, which is the structural composite. Structural composites are made of both homogeneous and composite materials. The properties of composite materials depend both on the material properties and the geometry of the composite. Structural composites can also be classified into two types. They are laminar composites and sandwich composites. Laminar composites are made of a number of two-dimensional sheets that have high strength in a single direction alone. These sheets are stacked and cemented together in the orientation that is shown here. A well-known example for this type is plywood. Now, the last classification we have is the sandwich composite. In this type, a lightweight core material is placed in between two thicker sandwich panels. The panels on the either side will be strong enough to withstand the applied loads. This type of composites are used in applications like roofs, walls, and floors of the building. With this, we have seen the different types of composites and that's it for this video. We'll meet up again in the next one. Until then, bye.